till we still winning. Magic card or we extending. Dark law, he still contending. Sunrise, your life is ending. You get people. And those of you who like to go to nationals from My Hero Academia, welcome to the vlog with Timothy motherfucking Scott. All right, and Tim, tell us why we're here today. I went down to the Lubbock Regional in Texas this weekend. After losing the first round, I continued to battle all the way to the last round where I got my second loss, like one win away from top eight. And I ended up placing 19th. I got my invite to national, so I'm gonna see all y'all there. If we have it, IRL. If not, if it's a remote duel, I don't know. I might play, I might not. I haven't decided yet. 19 out of how many? Uh, there were 239 peoples there. You know, a lot of people from the DFW regional, from the DFW area where I play at and stuff, so it was a lot of them, you know, but it was a lot of fun, met a cool people. You know, shout out to Ed, E-Man Robinson on the camera. He drove down there and back, you know, no problem at all. We didn't have to do that. You know, it was a cool trip. We had fun. Christopher, Earth Machine God, he went down there with us. You know, shout out to my sponsor, Limitless Games. You know, Jason, I played for Limitless Games out in Agtown, Arlington. You know, Jason, real cool dude. I've known him for so many years. You know, it's cool that he sponsors me, you know, paid my entry fee and all that stuff. And shout out to my other sponsor, Dive Pay to Win Win. He's a judge. He's a great player. And since I hadn't been able to play too much the past couple of weeks and stuff, he really gave me some tips on like where to hand trap certain decks and when to do it. And the information that he gave me was like clutch in so many situations, especially I think in round seven when I played against the Triple D deck. Like him telling me when to activate my hand traps before the regional started it was it was perfect and so i was able to two old that match man it's just he's been a lot of help you know he provides my cards and all around he's a good dude you know shout out to my other team members um steven bronder he didn't get a chance to make it shout out to nick the nature boy england he did come out there you know he didn't do too well but he was out there as well you know shout out to everybody in the dfw area who's helped me become a better player you know people like michael campos uh, Joey Lynch, um, Cal, I can't remember his last name, but he got, um, he played top 32 also. I think he finished like 10th place with his um, PK deck. He's been yeah. on PK for quite a while, so, you know, congrats out to him. Campos got fourth. And Joey, the undefeated Lynch, that boy got fifth place, I think. So, yeah, it was it was real great for the people in our area. You know, we did really good. We showed out. You know, we some of the best in Texas, and that's just what that is. Right so. Sure. The deck that I decided to play with is my Access Code Talker Hero deck. I kind of dubbed this one a little bit more like DPE, Dark Law Turbo. You know, I wanted to play heroes, but I didn't want to play the typical hero deck that everybody else does. So, I, you know, when I built this deck in Master Duel, I didn't think that it would end up going this far. And I was just like, it's just crazy because, you know, I posted it. And my boy E-Man on the cam, he was just like, are we going to see this IRL? And I had never thought about building it, you know, real life deck. And I was just like, forget it. Let's try it out. And it advanced all the way into this. And it's just been like an awesome deck. Like I said, I found a way to make DPE, Dark Law and Under Four Summons. Or I can bring out Double Floodgate and Four Summons. So, you know, I actually did not get nib not one time the entire regional. And I Dang. feel like people not knowing exactly what my deck did, it gave me a huge advantage. Like, one person ghost ogred me, he ghost ogred my soul day, and that was it. Like, I never got ghost ogred because I feel like a lot of people were waiting for Cross Crusader or waiting for Increase to hit the board because that's where they like to ghost ogre you. And those cards weren't inside my deck. They never hit the board, so my opponents didn't get a chance to activate hand traps like that. And then by the time I ended my turn, Dark Law was on the board, and now you can't activate that hand traps like that anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was just amazing. Like I said, I lost first round. I was devastated like to my heart bro like hey lying like game one i dark lawed him and he's playing drytron and he literally had no plays game two like he went first you know kind of set up stuff and i couldn't really do anything and game three i set up a bis dweller dark law and i didn't have any hand traps or anything but i was like there's no way i can lose this game and the boy he drew Fusion Destiny as his sixth card and was able, you know, to out my board and do it. And, like, I was devastated after the first round, but I decided to hang off in there. You know, I think um, round 
three or four. I played against Mystic Mind. That was another heartbreaker because y'all know I lost in a case tournament, in the top eight of a case tournament about a month or two ago to Mystic Mind. And like, ah, oh, it was just, it was, it was heartbreaking, man. And right. I ended up being able to win that match in game three. And just after that, you know, I just kind of, you know, went through all my opponents up until the last round where I played against the Josh. Like, I even asked for his name because, like, his choices in side decking and how to play, how to approach my deck was probably, like, the best that anybody had played me all day. And, like, he was definitely my toughest opponent. He definitely deserved that victory in game three. Like, he, he did everything right, you know. He, yeah. So, he did everything right. So from Master game. Duels to yep. Nationals. From Master Duels to Nationals, Access Code Talker Heroes. You know, here we go. Let's go. Uh, my main engine, the boy Three Sol Three Solid Soldiers. He's the one that I always wanted to have in my hand if I could. Three Solid Soldiers, Three Shadow Mists because he's going to add my mass change. Only two Stratos. Uh, I didn't want to run three Stratos because normal summoning him wasn't all that great. I always wanted to have Solid Soldier as my normal summon. So only two um, Stratoses and then I'm um, running the one Liquid Soldier. This was always my follow-up card because he was going to allow me to go into Link Climb all over again or to bring out a rank four if I needed to. So this was always like what I added off of Asode's effect most of the time or what I added off of Shadow Mist effect to add. And then Man, you went a long way because it was it was a long time that you just loathed having this card in your deck. Oh now yeah, you're I running did. three. <laughs> now I'm running three of them, probably like the worst normal summon in heroes. You know, Vion is probably my favorite one, but for this deck, the way it runs, I got I gotta have the solid soldier. You know, it's like very rare that as a hero player you want to search this out and use this as your main normal summon, but that's what he was in this deck, man. He he put in the work this weekend. Him and Shadow Mist and Dark Law were just MVP all day long. Then my two um my two destiny heroes for the fusion destiny target. This guy right here, I know y'all never really see him except in meme hero decks, but this card right here was the enabler that allowed me to play under Nib and still be able to bring out Dark Law. Yep. Yep. And so, you know, like in four summons, I was able to do it would be like one two and then verte is three dpe is four and then because this is in my graveyard on my opponent's turn he special summons himself to the board and because i searched out mass change with dark law i'm able to mass change my draw hand into dark law so i have dpe dark law i didn't have to worry about nib and like when you have it have those two with like two hand traps sometimes i even had three hand traps it was just and it my opponents just couldn't play through it you know and that's just what that was and then my um cards for my i sold engine uh one Ronald, one fire flint lady previously i was running two fire flint ladies but i decided to go ahead and put this off in there because grabbing that equip card back allowed me to do more plays that i wasn't able to do with my other deck and also i wanted to take the the tuner monster out because it was a brick a lot of times and with this one as long as I get two warriors out on the board and I can bring out I sold, I can use his effect, you know, special summon fire flint lady. And because there's a fire monster out on the board, I can special summon him from my hand anyway. Mm -hmm. So it also allowed me to, during the times when I did draw nobleman across out, I was able to extend my board a little bit further and I could bring out an Appaloosa with three negates, have DPE and dark law. And so, yeah, so he really helped a lot. Like, he came in clutch so many times. Like, the whole engine, like, it was great. I don't think I don't think there was any game where I actually drew Jasher. I think there were maybe two games where I drew Draw Hand. And, yeah, I think that was, that was about it. And, you know, that's the main hero engine. You know, it's a small engine. Basically, it's two-card combos. I just need Solid Soldier and, a, you know, another hero to go with it. Because if I have these two, I can also find my way into dpe dark law and yeah so yeah. i'll show y'all like a little small combo video coming up after that but that's this engine right here and then because my main engine is so small i was able to play a whole lot of hand traps you know the standard ones three ash super effective three ghost ogres gotta stop that adventure engine and other hero decks uh, three nib. This card was clutch all day long, you know, especially when you draw it with Ghost Ogre for Adventure against it, or when you draw the Imperms and the Valor. I know this ratio looks kind of weird, but 
because I was maining cross out, I wanted to have effect veiler included off in there also. But if not, if I wasn't running cross out, which I don't know, I might cut it, might not, I would just go ahead and run three imperms instead because it's not susceptible to um, imperm to a call by the grave. And also, there was another reason why, because triple attack this talent is kind of coming back around. And also, if I draw imperm as my sixth card, it's still usable, you know, because I can just do it, whereas effect veiler is not. I think for most engines, like, um, because they're running Halk, Effect Veiler is more effective, but since I cut Halk out of my extra deck, I just didn't really see the need to run um, Veiler over Imperm. Okay. So, three, six, nine, twelve hand traps. You know, they're all self-explanatory. Uh, I actually didn't draw Ash too much. I drew Nib a lot, and I drew Ghost Ogre a lot. And you know, I think in my my round eight against the Cyverse Elvish deck, I drew Ghost Ogre every time he had the Adventure Engine. So, <laughs> yeah, he made sure that I knew that. So, yeah, that's it for those cards. Then, of course, you know, like, I'm a strong advocate that when you play heroes, that you run this when you're going first, cross out designator. So I maxed out on this because I felt like if, like, with uh, so many people playing so many hand traps, that, you know, every deck is playing like 12, 14, some decks playing 15 hand traps that I at least wanted to hit that initial one. Because to hit the Ghost Ogre, to hit the Imperm, to hit the Veiler, or any of those things and I wouldn't have to worry about getting nibbed because like most of my combos are under four summons so they can hold that nib I just need to stop that ghost ogre or that impermanent veiler so that's what basically these cards were there for they came in clutch many times and then if I didn't have cross out designator I had mass change and there were times where I had to do that instead so this card was definitely MVP um, I was actually, before the tournament started, I was actually thinking about running only two since I search it so easily in this deck, but then I was like, nah, when people run in three Ghost Ogres, three Imperms, three Veilers and all that stuff, I better just keep it off in there. So yeah, that did what it was supposed to. Uh, my three search cards, um, one Rota, two Emergency Calls, this one did help me out a whole lot. Like being able to search Fire Flint Lady sometimes was like clutch, so yeah, that. Then, of course, uh, because everybody is abusing our DPE, uh, only two Fusion Destinies, you know. I don't think, I think I maybe hard drew it like once or twice, but other times, you know, I just use Verte to do it. Then, two A Hero Lives. With this card, whenever I use this one, it allows me to do something outside of DPE. I'm able to do either Babuska or Abyss Dweller or Tornado Dragon with Dark Law. And just four summons, because you know it basically goes the hero lives to bring out Stratos, Stratos to search whichever hero I'm missing, either Solid Soldier or Shadow Miss, mm -hmm. then special summon those two, and uh search for my mass change. Then my fourth summon is whatever XYZ monster I feel like is most effective against my opponent, or Babuska if I'm going blind, you know, if I'm going blind and don't have no idea what my opponent is playing. And then on my opponent's turn, flip the mass change, go into Dark Law, and yeah. So now I have, you know, my dynamic duo, Babuska Dark Law, or there were some games I did, Abyss Dweller Dark Law, just depending on what the matchup was. Mm -hmm. And then, with along with the 12 hand traps, I was also able to run to main two Cosmic Cyclones. Uh, I didn't really draw this too much during the entire tournament. But the times that I did draw it, it did hit cards that I really needed to in my Cyber Dragon matchup. I think I drew it both games. And the first game I hit the Imperm. And the second game I was able to hit that trap card that they searched for with Cyber Dragon Core. So yeah, that card came in clutch. Then my two equip cards. Um, I was playing two, two of these at first, but I decided to go ahead and put in a Living Fossil just in case like things kind of went wrong at certain points in my combo. But this card definitely came in clutch because there were times where I got hand trapped and I needed to be able to summon a hero, like special summon back out my Shadow Mist or something like that. And I can special summon it with Living Fossil and then later on I can still mass change it because you know it puts my hero out there on the board. And then especially in my game against Mystic Mind, I opened up with this in my hand and two warriors. So in game three, and he let me go first, at the end of my at the end of my turn, it was like it was DPE, Mass Hero Blast, Tornado Dragon, and I was like, there is no way I'm losing against Mystic Mind with this board. And then he went, um, and then he went evenly matched. 
and I almost cried. I almost cried because he went evenly match on me, but I kept Tornado Dragon out there and you know, they I was able to I was still able to get the game to get the game one. But yeah, so like I wouldn't change. Like this is the main deck. Like mm -hmm. honestly, like adding in Ronald I feel like made a big difference in the tournament. It helped me a lot. I don't think I would change anything inside of the main deck at all. It was forty three cards with about um what 12, 13, 14 going second cards. Very small engine. I kind of likened it to VW where you need two cards to get it going. And that's basically kind of like what I did. Unless you draw um, a hero lives, then like with one card, you can really like get the go get the engine going the way you want to. So, right. yep. That's my main deck right there. Performed awesomely. I said, I don't feel like there was an entire game the entire tournament that I played that I just drew a hand and I'm like, I'm not able to play Yu-Gi-Oh. So I basically got to play every game. And my extra deck, the boy, DPE, carry, double, double Dark Law. I know a lot of times y'all see me only running one, but I did run two for the tournament just because like, and there were times where I did, where like my opponent would search for something and I get that first Dark Law off, you know, maybe I didn't hit what I wanted to, but then my opponent would do another search and I would flip another mass change and go into second Dark Law and pick out another card out of their hand. And man, it was Dark Law put in work. These two definitely carried me the entire tournament. Like, I think the main reason why I did this is that I saw in the OCG how good Wake Up Your Elemental Hero was doing and bringing out DPE Dark Law. So I was like, let me see how effective it would be right now in the TCG if I could effectively bring out DPE Dark Law. And as y'all can see, like it worked. It worked wonders. Like we can play under Nib with it, still get out DPE Dark Law and, you know, just win games because of this card. Uh, my other mass hero targets um acid this game really helped me in my matchup against ddd because you know they set like head hunt they have pendulum cards and everything and just flipping mass change on um liquid soldier bringing out acid and clearing all that stuff out of there was good mass hero blast uh he didn't really i think except for the um the mystic mind patch i didn't really have to do this at all and then dn did help me uh, quite a few times because it's affect a special summon a uh, level four it's a special summon that shadow miss or a special summon that straddles like a lot of times it helped me to get an extra monster out on the board so that i could do uh rank four plays with um dpe and other stuff like that so yeah this card is still crazy off inside of this deck then um i did change up the my xc monster lineup a little bit y'all know last time i had like chalkanine and chalkanine and borbo oh, off inside of there but for the regional, since I didn't use the Chalk and Iron Board Bowl stuff too much, I ended up running these instead. Um, this one, this was like really, really helpful in so many matches, especially against Drytron. This was really good. The Tornado Dragon, he was MVP because I played Cyburst Elish quite a few times and the Mystic Mind player. And this card just put in work. Y'all know Babuska how much I was loving this card. He helped me win my match against Flunder. That boy duo. went. Yeah, he Dynamic Duo. That boy went um. He did the uh, D shifter on me. And you know, that's that card that when they play D shifter, you're supposed to lose. But Babuska was there to save me, and I was able to come out with that victory on that game. And then my boy Zeus, that I actually didn't end up losing the entire tournament because, like, I just, when I went Babuska, there was really no time where I just had to bring this out, you know. So I wouldn't say I would cut it because it's still a great card. I just actually didn't have to use it the entire tournament. Um, then my. Link Monster lineup, these guys right here. This guy we know, MVP, he searches follow-up, allows me to extend my play so well. This card, Unicorn, he came in clutch, especially because I needed to Link Climb up into Access Code Talker. And there was one time where I had to give my opponent a token that had like 8,800 attack and like 4,400 defense, and I had to bounce that token up out of there. So yeah, Unicorn, like... You know, at first I was running Halk and Selene, but I mm -hmm. think this this lineup was like a little bit more better. Um, Access Code Talker. There were so many games where I just OTK with my opponent with this card. It was it was crazy, especially like when you have Dasher off in there and you're able to special summon like that hand trap or what have you and be able to link climb up. It was really really good. Verte, 
He was the enabler for my four card DPE Dark Law combo. And then Appaloosa. I put this one off in there because like if I draw like the most optimal hands, like I said I was able to end on a board with um three with a three negate Appaloosa, DPE and Dark Law, or it could be a three negate Appaloosa with Dark Law and whatever um rank four monster I wanted out on the board. It actually never came up the entire tournament. I just never drew that um that optimal hand to where I was able to do it. But you know, I probably wouldn't take it out because I'm pretty sure at some point I would need to go into it and I would regret not having it. So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't change I don't think I would change anything inside of my extra deck. I mean this one, like I said, it's kinda but I don't know what I would even replace it with, you know, like I said, but the deck just performed amazing all day. And you know the main thing the main thing I just kinda wanted to show y'all is um I can show y'all this real quick. But the main reason why I ended up running this deck is just because, like I said, the ability to use these guys and to play under Nib and have this board out there. And it just it just won so many games. Now, one thing I will tell y'all, a tip thing that because of evenly matched, evenly matched, I knew a lot of people were siding in because that's one of the most effective cards against heroes. So there was never a game where I end it with my board just like this. I always, cause I know a lot of people, they like to pop the Verte so that they could avoid Super Poly. But I didn't really think that people, people definitely weren't expecting heroes, especially not at the top tables. And I didn't feel like I needed to worry about Super Poly. I was more concerned about evenly matched than I was against Super Poly. So I would leave my Verte out on the board. I got evenly matched three times. And every single time I was basically like, pop dp dot pop verte so that i could leave my dark law out on the board because if you pop this verte and you're worried about super poly you let this go and you get evenly right here all you can do is you know pop dpe pop dark law and it's like it, it sucks when you have to do that so yeah, yeah I, I felt like i made the right choice in the games and stuff i really didn't fear super poly maybe if i played against a hero mirror match i would have did it but even the, even if you do pop it you're still gonna get um super poly so just just leave it out there. Just leave it out there because it helps you play around evenly matched so that you don't lose your Dark Law also. But, yeah. Uh, that's it. And then I was really mad that I lost this, um, the game to to Drytron because this was my board and <laughs> DPE just came in and wrecked my board so it wasn't cool. But, yeah, that's my main deck. Hashtag DPE carries. Hashtag DPE carries. He definitely carried. It wasn't even Drytron that I lost to. I lost to DPE. And um, my side deck was more cards for going second just because I refused to allow my opponent to set up boards. Uh, three Gamma drivers. I think I used it. Only Drew it. Only dudes it one time the entire tournament. But, you know, he did what he was supposed to do. He won games. Um, token collector. I played against Cyburst Eldritch a couple few times, but actually, I don't think I ever actually drew the Token Collector. Though I really like it inside of this deck because I am playing, like, since I have the rank fours inside of my extra deck, if I do get out Token Collector, you know, I can easily make those and link climb up into my Access Code Talker or whatever I need to do because of Token Collector. Um, because I'm really afraid of the Flunder matchup going second. <laughs> uh, I really didn't feel like playing the three Imperms and Ash and Vader would be enough, so I put all three Drolls inside of my side deck because I did not want to lose to Flunder at all. Like, I, I hate that matchup so bad. Like, uh, hmm, so do I. Yeah, so it's just like I played the three Droll and Lock Birds and then um, the PK, Virtual World, different stuff like that. I played the uh, two Lantias. Like, all in all, I think the hand traps inside of my extra deck, I actually didn't end up using them at all, all day. I think I drew Gamma. I never drew this one. I drew this as my sixth card one time against a Drytron player, but I don't remember activating Troll and Lockbird on anybody. I don't even remember activating Lancia, so it was just like, I really didn't even draw my side deck cards the entire tournament. Hmm. And then my last three cards, um, evenly matched. I actually, I drew this against the Mind player but like I said game three, he had made me go first. So it actually didn't even do anything. Like I don't think I used it against any other deck the entire tournament. Like so like pretty much my side deck didn't really do anything at all the entire tournament. It was Dark Law DPE that put in the work, man, and 
you know, I just got to say, the regional, it was a lot of fun, you know, it's cool traveling with your friends and buddies, you know, seeing a lot of people, you know, I made a lot of comments during the tournament that, you know, when I saw people from my area playing against each other, I'd be like, oh, so y'all drive five hours to come play against each other way out here when y'all could have just did this at home, like, it happened a lot, like, Lucky for me, I actually didn't have to play against anybody from my region, from my area. I got to play against like completely different people. And, you know, overall it was a lot of fun. You know, it was awesome, man. And we're gonna be going down to Houston next month for that regional. My boy E, we gonna put in like this next month of training and that boy's gonna get his invite at the Houston regional. And, you know, hopefully we have IRL nationals and I'm gonna see y'all there, man. For sure. Anything you wanna say, E? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, E did play in the um he, he made it to the finals of the Winamat, I think. And what did you play against in the final? I played against Bird Flu and Lost. Yeah, okay. He played against the Bird Flu and Lost, but yeah, he did make it to the finals of a Winamat, you know. And, you know, I saying shout out, die, pay the win win. Cooper, Big Hero Six, you know, he's been a lot of help to me, you know, with rulings and you know, keeping me up uh, on playing heroes. You know, he's been a lot of help. And, you know, just shout out to everybody out there who watches, supports me, you know, who likes my videos, comments on them. You know, y'all keep me wanting to play heroes and doing what I can with it. I can't promise that it'll be something like completely crazy down at the Houston Regional. We'll have to see how the meta develops and see what, what crazy stuff I can come up with next. Um, I would say my main reason for running the deck this way was like definitely because of the hand trap lineups that people were playing. I felt like playing the deck this way, most people wouldn't ogre me and it wouldn't give people the chance to nip me. And I feel like it played a real crucial role in, you know, winning and winning this week, you know. It's like, it's real tough when you lose that first round and have to win out after that. It's like every match is gotta win, gotta win, gotta win. And, you know, somehow we did it, you know, appreciate everybody, you know, see y'all at nationals. Damn, MF Scott <laughs> out.